Number 22. A function is defined by this formula here. Find where the graph of this cuts the axis. That's just for two marks. I suppose you could just state the points because it's only two marks. The marks will just be the answers, but I'll put it down formally. So what happens? Well, first of all, where would it cut the y-axis? Well, you're on the y-axis if your x-coordinate is zero. Yes, and I wasn't paying attention to the question there, and I've answered these the other way around. That's because normally you'd work out the y-axis first of all, since it's the simpler of the calculations. And if your x-coordinate is zero, that means that y is going to be zero take away two, times 0 squared plus 1, which is negative 2 times 1, which is negative 2. So that means it's the point 0, negative 2 in the y-axis. Where does it cut the x-axis? Well, you're on the x-axis if you've got no height, if y is 0. The y-coordinate of the point must be 0. In which case, if this is the y-coordinate here, this expression, that means x minus 2 times x squared plus 1 has to equal 0. So either of those factors could be 0. Well, this can never be 0. If you square something, the lowest the value can have is 0. So the lowest value for that bracket is 1. So that part's never equal to 0. So it can only be this. That means it's only x equals 2, which means it cuts the y x-axis at 2, 0. Well, that would be the first part. There's the intersection with the axis. B. Find the coordinates of stationary points and determine their natures. Right. Well, if f of x equals x minus 2 times x squared plus 1, I'll need to multiply that out. So that means I've got x times on both, so that's x cubed plus x minus the 2x squared minus 2. And with a little bit of foresight, I could have just written them in the correct order. x cubed minus 2x squared plus x minus 2 for f of x. Now that I've got separate terms, I can go ahead and differentiate it. So that means that f dash dx is simply going to be multiplied by the power, take one of the power, multiplied by the power, two twos of four, take one of the power, and the coefficient of that linear term is just one. Then, if I'm looking for stationary points, I'll find stationary points when the derivative is zero, when the gradients are zero, which means I've got to solve this quadratic equation. Well, that's a simple enough one to do because there's only one way to make 3x squared, that's 3x times x. There's only one way to make 1, that's 1 times 1, if it in fact factorises. And it's not a wee nasty one where you'd have to use the formula, but it's in paper 1, so it must factorise. And then if the middle term's negative, that means the bigger one's negative, that says they're both the same. So finally that would be either x equals the opposite, so it's one third, or x equals one. I'll just put them underneath, possibly. If x is negative three, that means y is going to be, and I'll use this formula here. But yeah, I've got a calculator, so I'll have to work this out. So I've got x minus two, so that's good. I'll just put it down. One third minus two times one third squared plus one. So that's going to be negative, that's six thirds, so it's negative five upon three, and a third squared is a ninth, plus another nine bits would be times 10 upon nine, so that's going to be negative 50 upon 27. So that's a bit nasty. X equals one, that'll be easier. If X equals one, Y is going to be, just using this for you'd use this one, I suppose, when it's just one, I could just use this one. One take away two is negative one, one plus one is two, so y is going to equal negative 2. So there's the points then. So I've got the points. 1 third, negative 50 upon 27, and 1, negative 2. Determine the natures. Well, put down a table for this. Now there's two ways you could do two separate tables, if you like but it's a continuous function, so nothing nasty happens between the two of these. That's just a smooth function. Whatever was happening before it got to a third, happened forever. Whatever it did when it left a third, because it was horizontal at a third, it kept doing until it hits another turning point, which was at the one, and then it changed again, continued forever. So I'm just going to put down these two points. I've got a third and I've got one. 
Something happened before, something happened after, and something happened between for the x's. Choosing a number, so I could choose a number like 0, a number like 10, and a number somewhere in between, like a half, and then find what f dash dx is. Of course, all the time, I know what the answer is anyway, because it's a cubic graph, and I know a cubic graph looks like this. It's going to be a maximum, then it's going to be a minimum. Still, there'll be a mark for demonstrating what it is. Well, at a third, it should come to zero, and it does. Three times a third is one, take away one is zero. And at one, one take away one is zero, so it must be zero. What happens at zero? You can either use this expression, it may be easier. You've got nothing, take away nothing is nothing, plus one is one, so it's positive. At 10, you've got 300, and it doesn't matter what the rest says, that's positive, because the other parts won't be big enough to overpower it. Between them, at a half, that's a bit more awkward. Well, at a half, use the factorised form. That'll be easier, because then you can just use something that I'm going to use in the next bit anyway. You're just going to use the signs. X, a half take away one is negative. Three halves take away one is positive, And a positive times a negative is negative. And then I can put the picture in then. It's going to be going up, along, down, along and up. So I've got a maximum turning point and then a minimum turning point, <coughs> which I can then put in. So I've got, um, this is a bit messy, I've got a maximum there, and I've got a minimum there. Maximum turning point, minimum turning point. Now the other way of working out what happens in between and before and after, rather than taking direct numbers and then doing substitutions, we we'll just be to use these two factors because f dash dx, this quadratic, is made up of a product of 3x minus 1 and x minus 1. And in terms of neighbourhoods, if you wanted to split it and put one third plus a bit, and the other bit would be a third minus a tiny bit. Because you're writing it down that way as if you were actually doing that, and then you don't do that at all. You do a third minus a heck of a lot or a third plus an awful lot. You know, it's sticking in close. This method does stick in extremely close, infinitesimally close. It would be like this then, you would say, well, working out 3 times x minus 1, at a third that comes to 0. If it's even slightly less than a third, it's going to go negative. If it's slightly more, it's going to go positive, and then it'll be positive forever after. But that's the point. Those two signs have come from as close as possible to a third just by using the signs. This one, when x is 1, that'll be 0. If x is slightly less than 1, then it's going to go negative. And if it's more than 1, it's going to go positive. Multiplying those two together will give you the value of f dash dx. A negative times a negative is positive. 0 times anything is 0. That's negative, that's 0, that's positive. Those values there are actually the values go as close as possible to negative a third. That's negative a third plus an infinitesimal step forward. So that's actually a more accurate way to do that. And it saves you having to do any calculations as well. You get the same result. It's going up, along, down, along and up, along. So you've got a maximum turning point and then a minimum turning point. Then part C. On separate diagrams, draw these two sketches, one of the function itself and the other of the negative of the function. So I'll need a set of axes here. Now I've put the information down here. Now these points are all very close together. So 0, negative 2, I'll put about, maybe I'll put that about here. So 0 along, negative 2 down, and 2, 0 would go there. So that's at negative 2 and that's at 2. Put this one in first. 1, negative 2. So at 1, I'm level with that at negative 2. Whoops, 1, negative 2. At a third, it's negative 54. So that's just slightly higher up than that. Negative 50, because 54 would be 2. But I'll just maybe exaggerate it, so I'll put it about there. So what happens with this then? Is to come up through here, take a turn, take another turn there, and then carry on through there. Well, that was the point one-third, negative 50 upon 27. So that would be the graph of y equals f of x, a bit scrawly. Second one, you have to draw the graph of y equals negative f of x. Well, that just means the answers will stay in the same place, 
but they'll be turned into a negative. So the whole graph will just go upside down. So I'll put another axis here. And then I could just think, just go through all those points doing what it says. I'm going to draw a graph of y equals negative f of x. Well, that means the x's stay where they are. So this point, 0 would stay at 0, but that would go to 2. So instead of 0, negative 2, it's going to be 0, positive 2. 2 would stay at 2, and the negative 0 is still 0, so that's still there at 2. A third is still a third, but instead of negative that, it's going to be positive that, so that'll be there. And at 1, it will still be at 1, but instead of negative 2, it's going to be positive 2. So it's just going to go through those points. So it's going to come down the way this time through there, and then carry on down. Well, that's going to be the point 1, positive 2, and that's going to be the point 1 third, but instead of negative, positive 50, 27ths.